In this video, I'll show you three ways you can embed supporting documentation, such as job aids, into your Adobe Captivate eLearning project. Okay, let's get started here. So, as promised, I'm going to show you three different ways that you can embed uh, a job aid or some other supporting documentation into your eLearning project with Adobe Captivate. Um, this will work generally the same for Adobe Captivate 8 as well as Adobe Captivate 9. Uh, there are some differences here. Uh, it might even be the same in future versions of Captivate as well. So here's what I've got. There's three ways I'm going to talk about. The first way is through what's known as a hyperlink. And just like a hyperlink on a web page, you're going to select some text from, let's say, uh, a caption box like this one here. And to insert a hyperlink there, you're going to look at your properties inspector. And you're looking down the, the page for something that looks like a couple of little uh, chains linked together. That's the insert hyperlink button. So with some text highlighted, simply click the insert hyperlink button. And this little pop-up will appear. And you can choose uh, any number of things to, to link to. Uh, a web page is the default, but any of these options here, any of these objects that you, you wish to, or actions you wish to link to, you can do so. Uh, you could link to another slide, for example, or you could actually have the link be uh, a send email to functionality. But in this case, we're going to stick with something simple. Just open a file. And that's going to uh, clear out the, the location here. So you need to select what that file is that you wish to open. As you can see, I have my job aid right here on the desktop. I'm going to select that by clicking on the Browse button here. And you'll see there it is on my desktop. I'll click on Open. And that's going to put the full location on my computer uh, where, this, where this particular job aid is located. Now the reality is, is that job underscore aid dot PDF isn't located on your learner's computer. So the first thing you're going to want to do is get rid of all of this information here. We'll just get that right out. The only thing we're going to keep is the exact file name. The next thing we want to do before we click on OK is to select how we want this link to open. And that's done through this little drop down here. The default is new, and in this case, I recommend new. What, the, what that means is that if I click this hyperlink, it will open a new browser window or a new tab within my browser and open the job aid in that location. That's advisable because if you were to have it open in the current window, what's going to happen there is the, uh, the current window will switch from your e-learning course to the job aid. And this could actually cause problems with the user completing your e-learning course. So always recommend uh, when you're opening a job aid to do so in a new browser window. Um, I never use parent or I never use top. So we'll stick with new and we'll click on OK. And that's going to do, it's going to change the color and underline your text. Now you may wish to modify that before proceeding. Uh, I don't like this particular dark blue. So maybe I'll choose a lighter blue that won't contrast so much with my particular theme that I'm using. So that, that looks okay. The next method of, uh, of opening a job aid or including a job aid in your e-learning course is to simply have it launched from a button. It's very similar to a hyperlink, but in this case the button is separate from the text. And you can set that up just by going to the Actions tab of your but button's uh, properties here. So we'll click on Actions. The default is Go to Next Slide. Um, I also like to check off the hand cursor so that when users hover their mouse over it, they can see that it is a clickable object. And I also like to disable the click sound. Not really a fan of the click sound that's built into Adobe Captivate. Uh, so the on su success action is actually going to be Open URL or File. And that's located, uh, you know, a little bit, not quite halfway down the list here. And when you do that, that's going to give you an opportunity to either enter in a web address, but that's not what we're doing in this case here. We're going to use that same browse button 
to select our job aid. So that's done the same way. Like before, um, you know, my desktop location isn't the same as everyone else's desktop location. So the only thing we're going to keep here is the actual file name. We're going to get rid of all that location information. This uh, little drop down, this uh, destination window, uh, will probably default to the current window. Uh, you're going to you're going to want to change that to new uh, again because you don't want to break your e-learning. And the one thing that's uh, that's not happening with the hyperlink is this little checkbox here of continue playing the project. Uh, there may be occasion where you want to continue playing the project, but I like to generally uncheck that because if I have a button on this page with a pause, I want to stay paused until the user has had a chance to look at that supporting documentation and only return to playing the project once they've returned to the course and click next to continue. The third way of putting a job aid into an e-learning course uh, is now my, my current favorite way. Uh, because one of the things about both of these two methods is that when I publish this course, I'll need to copy this job aid file and place it into the package file for either the SCORM package or the AICC package or the XAPI package um, or tin can, if you will. And so there's a manual step that if you forget, um, Clicking on these links will go nowhere, and it will certainly disappoint your learners. This method here, this third method I'm going to talk about, actually takes care of that for you. So what I'm going to do is, in this case here, I'm actually going to click on the Objects drop-down icon from the toolbar and select Web. Now this creates a web box or a web object, if you will, and all of the adjustments that you're going to make to this are located on the properties inspector over here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to resize this so that I'm using as much of the real estate on my screen as possible. And we'll just make sure that that's nice and large. The default is a website location. That's what you're seeing here in the preview. Um, but we're going to change that in a moment here. I'm just going to center that. So let's take a look at the options that are available for me. It's not going to be used as a multi-state object, so we don't need to do anything there. We're going to keep this as address, but if you had, let's say, uh, Vimeo video or YouTube video, you could actually put the embed code for those objects right here. Uh, in this case here, uh, auto load is checked off. We're going to keep that the same. We're going to browse to the job aid, just like before. Now, unlike before, I don't actually need to delete this information because what's going to happen here is that job underscore a dot PDF is going to end up in my library file. And I won't need to actually drag it over to the final SCORM package or AICC package. I'm going to display this in the slide. I'm going to keep border checked off, but that's an optional choice for you. I would recommend scrolling because, of course, uh, you won't probably see the full document on screen, so you may need to give your users the ability to scroll down and see the rest of the document. If it's a larger document, you might want to check off loading animation, which will be a visual indicator to your users that, you know, the job aid is coming. It's a larger document. Give it a few moments to load. But that's basically it. So once you've got your different methods of uh, embedding a job aid into your e-learning course, it's time to publish it. So let's publish this to the computer here. And we're just going to call that embedded job aid demo. We're going to put that on my desktop. I'm going to publish this for HTML5. And you can make it scalable if you wish. So we'll just hit publish. Now, because of those first two methods of embedding a job aid, uh, don't actually copy the job aid to the published folder. Uh, you're going to see this HTML publish uh, reminder, if you will. And it's just saying that, you know what, this job aid needs to be copied into the embedded job aid folder for that to work here. So here's actually my published folder here. 
Uh, so again, all I need to do is to copy this. Uh, this would normally be zipped up, but I could just paste it into there. Or if it's zipped up, simply drag it into the, the SCORM package or AICC package or whatever it is. I can click on OK now. And do we want to view the output? Let's say yes. That should work fine. So here's my first slide. Let's see what happens when we click the Here button. So that's going to open up the job aid in a new tab or a new window. And that's great. That works. Also, you've got this button here. It's got the appropriate rollover effect. Same idea. Opens up in a new tab. Let's click Next and see what the web object looks like. So that has advantages as well. You certainly can see the, the full uh, PDF here. And of course, uh, using my, my mouse scroll wheel, I can scroll the whole um, item there. But they're going to see the, the, full, um, uh, the full course on their screen. And it's not breaking their connection with the actual e-learning course. So that definitely has its advantages. Guys, if you like the videos that I produce for you, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you thought this video was helpful or useful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up.